Women Taking the Lead, bonus episode number 11. Happiness is not the reward at the end of the goal. Happiness is the reward for working toward the goal. Hello, my name is Jody Flynn and welcome to Women Taking the Lead, where we are all about creating blasts of inspiration to help you overcome self-doubt so you can lead with confidence, integrity, and a sense of humor. Head over to womentl.com forward slash recognize to reserve your spot in our upcoming webinar on how to be recognized and rewarded for the work you do. Now, your future awaits, so let's get started. Hey everyone, it's Jody Flynn here, your hostess of Women Taking the Lead. And I wanted to come to you today with a topic that yeah, I guess I would say it's been bothering me for a little while. Um, although I don't know if bother is the right word. And it's this whole concept of being happy and what it means to be happy. And this past year, I kicked off a local mastermind group in Maine and the participants gelled very quickly. And within an hour, they were being very open about their struggles, the current state of their businesses and where they would be like where they would like to be making more progress. And some common themes quickly cropped up. And one in particular was the need to constantly work on creating the conditions for a great life, as well as what is required to maintain those conditions. It all felt like a lot of work. And one of the participants blurted out, happiness is not for the faint of heart. And we all chuckled, but it was laughter with the ring of truth right? Happiness is not for the faint of heart. It takes some work. And, you know, this woman was right. Happiness is not something you work for, achieve, and then you can forever stare at your happiness diploma on the wall, right? And so this might be why you might be feeling like a happiness failure at times. So here's my thinking and what I've come to understand. Happiness is not an achievement at all. And I think that's where many of us go wrong. Happiness is a state of being. So it can come and go based on the choices we make and our current level of awareness. If you feel like you're failing because there are times when you are clearly not happy, you are not alone. In fact, floating in and out of happiness is part of the human experience, but you can increase the amount of happiness you experience overall. And this is something that hit me over the head recently when I noticed that I used things that used to roll right off my shoulders started to bother me. My patience was wearing thin and I was starting to feel unappreciated by some people around me. And these are red flags for me. This is an early warning system, or in this case, not so early um, for me that I'm exhausted and need to unplug from work, obligations, or anything that doesn't serve my greater good or my highest self. And I do need to unplug. Despite all my recommendations otherwise to my friends, family, and clients, I haven't had a day off in months. And if I only put in a few hours of work on a Saturday or a Sunday, I consider that, uh, and watch the air quotes, day off. (laughs) I know what I'm afraid of, that everything will unravel if I take time for myself or I'll fall behind on a mountain of work if I don't get a little bit done every day. And I pride myself on excellence. It's one of my core values. And I'm afraid that I will have to sacrifice excellence if I take time for myself and fill it with non-purposeful, you know, fluff stuff. Also, I have a sense that my business is on a precipice. It's nearing that tipping point where at any time I can suddenly grow and Yes, then I can hire someone to take some of this load off my shoulders. The problem is, I know this way of thinking is a trap. I'm more likely to see my business to the next level if I'm well-rested and enjoying my work. And you and I will not experience happiness if we are, are running ourselves into the ground. If we are pushing ourselves too hard, we may actually be preventing the very experience we are trying to obtain, which is happiness. And yes, happiness is not for the faint of heart. 
I have yet to meet a happy person who claims that happiness comes naturally to them. They all say it requires choosing to focus on what's good in their life, or this is a practice of gratitude, and choosing to focus on where they can make a difference, and that's owning their personal power. Achieving new levels of happiness requires mindfulness and practice. And like any practice, the more you put into it, the more consistent you are, the better the results you'll get. It may be your self-care, honoring your values, finding work that is meaningful to you, or taking on new habits and practices that support your growth. Likely, it's a combination of things. Sometimes for me, finding happiness starts with identifying what's stealing my happiness my dissatisfaction, my annoyances, my body's aches and pains, these are all clues left behind by happiness. If I can uncover what is causing these symptoms, I can do something about it and my happiness comes back. So side note, I did find myself becoming annoyed and losing patience with people. This is when we all usually want other people to change so we can be happy once again. (laughs) I did that at first, and all it did was make me even more upset because it's a position of no power. You know, needing other people to change in order to be happy, you're then giving them, that uh, that person or those other people, you're giving them power over you. You're saying, I can't be happy unless they allow it, and that's not true, you know, It was during a conversation with a friend that I blurted out, I think I'm taking everything too personally. I think I'm making their behavior mean that they don't appreciate the work that I'm doing and that they don't respect me. You know, which was really eye-opening for me because before that moment, because I'm an extrovert, I think out loud. And before that moment, that thought hadn't really occurred to me or it really hadn't sunk in. Talking with my friend helped me to put it in perspective. And I was suddenly aware of how tired I was. I knew I had been pushing myself too hard and needed to make some changes. That I'm starting to put into practice and I know it won't take long for me to recover. Because you know what I've found to be true in the past? After finding the cause of my suffering, while I'm working to put everything back to right, happiness usually joins me to complete the task together. Happiness isn't the reward at the end of the goal. Happiness is the reward for working toward the goal. And I'm going to say this again because this is so important. And this was an aha moment I had in the past year or so. Happiness is not the reward at the end of the goal. Happiness is the reward for working toward the goal, right? Happiness is not a red flag that my life is perfect. It's a red flag that I'm paying attention. I'm taking care of myself, taking care of those around me, and doing work that brings meaning to my life. I don't need to be happy all the time. That's unrealistic. And if you're honest, you'll admit you don't even want to be happy all the time. If you wanted to be happy all the time, then why watch movies that make you cry or you know will make you angry or scared or uncertain, right? We crave those human experiences. So know that when you're not happy, it's just more information for you to identify your own flags for what makes you unhappy. Rather than shooting for being happy all the time, which is impossible, shoot to achieve an overall level of happiness that supports the life you want to live, which brings me to my next point, the connection between happiness and leadership. Why am I talking about this in the first place on a podcast called Women Taking the Lead? The field of positive psychology has exploded with research linking success with happiness, and it's not what you might think. The research doesn't show that success brings happiness. It shows that people with happiness practices are more likely to be successful. They are healthier, more productive, have closer relationships, and feel that the work they do makes a difference, which motivates them even when facing obstacles. And let's face it, would you prefer to follow someone who overall is happy or someone who overall is trying to make it through the day, right? You want to follow someone and you feel more confident following someone who is actively finding happiness or working towards that. So the bottom line is, you don't have to achieve happiness in this moment. 
The key is to pay attention to what brings you a sense of fulfillment, well-being, and joy, and what gets in the way of those feelings. Pay attention to where and how you can make a difference and do work that is meaningful to you. And focusing on these things will increase your overall experience of happiness. So I'll leave you with this question. What makes you happy? Thank you for joining me on Women Taking the Lead. Are you ready to take the lead in your own life? Head over to womentl.com forward slash recognized to reserve your spot in my upcoming webinar on how to be recognized and rewarded for the work that you do. And to strengthen you on your leadership journey, I'd like to send you off with a quote from Marianne Williamson. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine, as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It's not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. Again, thank you for joining with me. And here's to your success.